Zebs. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you look like you haven't seen a Baba in four months. Nah, come on. It's only been about four weeks, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good, man. How you been holding up? It, it's interesting staying uh, in the CBD during your lockdown. I don't have a backyard, dude. Let's, yeah. It's really annoying. Like, it's annoying. Oh, I think even, even modern housing is going that direction. Actually, yeah, because even where I'm at, it's it's a case of not really having a yard, but you do have a good space at least where I'm at, you know. But yeah. I, I I get your frustration though. I no, but like actually, the difference between where I stay and where you stay is that you can go outside and chill. I, that's the reason why I moved out of CBD actually, because I also used to be in New Town, Joba, but yeah. I, I just couldn't do it. Anyways, you ready? Yeah. Is it a quantitative analysis? Yeah, it's quantitative analysis. I uh, that that's that's what they call it. What do you mean? That's what they call it. That's a job, man. That's what we call it. That's what you. Should... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, I think I think really it's just semantics. Really, it's just it depends what you call it. Because you know, even even at, at our own workplaces, you they'll tell they'll give you a title of maybe data analyst, but data scientist. That happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I think it goes with industry, actually, with the industry. Because if you think about it, uh, quantitative analysis is what they used to call data scientists before it became the, the intern. It's literally just the same thing. So let's actually start there, right? We're jumping into the interview. The first mm -hmm. question, like on your day-to-day, -day, what is it that you do? Oh, day-to-day. -day, um, well, uh, first, let me just say it's not as much numbers as you think. That's if you're a good quantitative analyst. Yeah. If you're a bad one, that, that yeah, then yeah, you probably do a lot of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a good one, if you're yeah. a good one, you know that there isn't really as much uh, number crunching as as people would normally uh, think that you do. But when you do, you have to do something proper, and it is it does get a bit intense actually, because just like data science, uh, me my, my a typical day just involves me nagging people. Just prodding people, trying to elicit some requirements out, out, out from them, trying to understand the business, because uh, that that's like the greatest thing that you you can be as a data science data scientist, the ability to, to communicate and understand what people are, are what we, what actually needs to be solved, because you you find yourself falling into the trap where uh, you get so caught up. We call it falling into the rabbit hole. You get so caught up in in, in the technical stuff that you end up solving uh, a non-existent problem because we just didn't communicate good enough, you know? Yeah, my typical day-to-day -day just consists of setting up meetings, talking with people, arguing. We argue a lot because <laughs> obviously uh, a lot of... Uh, if we're talking about getting requirements or extracting yeah. requirements or information from, from business or stakeholders, it's completely subjective. It's completely subjective, and yeah. that's like, yeah, and that's where engagement comes in. Actually, so do, do you also spend like a lot of time teaching people about your job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my, my department is called uh, uh, it, it's analytics, basically. It's just right. it's an analytics department. So people think we we can do magic, you know, when you when they just hear <laughs> analytics, they think you can do magic, you know. Yeah. So they don't understand the difference between, you know, the team that's supposed to handle maybe the data, the quality of the data, yeah. and the ones who are supposed to develop models or and variables and all that stuff, which is us, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I do get a lot of questions about, hey, where, where can I get this? Because they default to us, even if it's an IT issue, like getting access to, yeah. to, to something, they're even going to come to you like, wait, but I'm literally, I'm, I literally know less than you when it comes to that, you know? <laughs> It was a huge oversight from our side, actually, coming yeah. from the academy. No, I'm not going to blame the academy. Yeah. The academy, they, they empowered us with all that they could empower us. Uh, the, the big omission was actually the reality that a lot of people in business, uh, they, they yeah. understand Excel yeah, more than all, all the Pythons, your SQLs. Uh, knowing Excel is a must because, yeah, exactly. a lot of them, actually, they're also pretty good actually, with the macros and everything. I mean, yeah. I, I'm learning stuff from people who are not even in analytics because they're just so good at, at actually Excel. And since you're there, because as a data scientist or a quantitative analyst, in my case, my job is to enable success uh, to business. 
So it shouldn't, I shouldn't dictate to them exactly how they should understand what I communicate, what I'm trying to communicate, but I should come to their playground. Exactly. They, they should yeah. be a business strategy and then you support it with data strategy. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm a support, yeah, I'm a support structure. Like I said, if you don't understand the business problem and you must yeah. always, that's why people do, you know, the scrum, scrumming uh, in the morning, they're going to scrum or yeah. the agile methodology. Because yeah. you must always, always come back to what are we trying to solve? Because you, it's very easy to get distracted, especially when you, when you get, when you see numbers, you can easily exactly. take a detour and think of, yeah. of all the fancy algorithms. But it's not really. Yeah. Sometimes the problem doesn't even require algorithms. It just requires critical thinking. Just look at the numbers. Maybe you apply your 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 previous knowledge, your knowledge from from your previous problems that you've solved. Then you also, can come up also, with a solution. You you mentioned yeah. that the academy em empowered you. Let's talk a little bit about that. How was oh. your, your first project at Explore? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do that. To me. Don't do that. To me. Yeah. <laughs> and that for the record, I remember it was it, supposed to be five people at the time, right? <laughs> and two providers. But <laughs> for us, it was just two people, and that's it. Yeah. So how was that for you then? How was that for you? Like, like a new yeah. environment, uh, like a new way of doing things. And then you have like, you know, the water crisis project to say that, okay, yeah. take all uh, these data sets, create a third normalized database yeah. and then solve yeah. the problem. Like how was the whole experience for you? Those three months? Yo, it was overwhelming. I even knew it was overwhelming. Like literally, like I, you even, you know, it was literally yeah. just me and you working. Uh, but luckily for us, uh, the people in the background, they were actually watching. They, they actually saw what was going on. Because you and I, we were both in the top 30 ultimately, right? Yeah. For the, for the yeah. academy. Yeah. yeah. But but it wasn't, it wasn't based on marks. If it was based on marks, we probably wouldn't have made it in top 30 because we just yeah. had bad luck in terms of group, group members. But luckily, the academy, they were so actually so focused on actually developing a holistic uh, data science, a science sort of uh, framework that they actually saw who's working how, uh, who's yeah. little more than others. Yeah, it wasn't just about the marks. Because if it was about the marks, you and I wouldn't have made it to. I mean, you're brilliant in machine learning, but even yeah. as brilliant as you are, you know that in data science, you can't make it alone. And you certainly, certainly Dude, wouldn't have made it alone. Yeah, it's it's a team can't. sport. Wherever you go, data science is a team sport. Like, whether you at it Explore, is, whether you're a company, yeah. data science is a team sport. But like, I think. Like mm. me and you, we were lucky in it that you already knew SQL. So you took care of the database stuff. And then I knew Python. I took care of like, yeah. you know, like building all the data analysis about and all that stuff. About that. Yeah. Actually, about that. I didn't know SQL, Temple. I had to learn it right then. You told me that you. You told me that you knew SQL. So that's why I said you take care of the database no, stuff. I, 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 I had seen SQL in college, like, and that was like the basic, the most basic queries. Yeah. Queries, but not nearly to that extent, you know? That's why I used to come early in the morning because then uh, those guys are big time young. They would help me out with SQL. They would help me out a lot, actually. Yeah. I literally had to learn that. Like, I was literally thrown into the deep end and I just learned how to swim there. It's like I always say, while I can't swim, but if you can't drown, I'm always going to come up with the, uh, with I, the solution. And For me, I, I really thought that, you know, like, okay, cool. You you fluent in SQL, take care of that stuff. And I remember actually trying to to do some of the third normalizing stuff, man. That stuff was, was really yeah. hard. Like especially when yeah, you yeah. have more data coming in later. It's easy to work out how to third normalize the data that you currently have. And then you get other data yeah. sets down the line. It becomes very difficult. You have to go back and redo all of that stuff. Yes. And yes. Then, you That's know, like, thing. you know, we, we were blessed with uh with a great team. And a great mentor. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it made us stronger. It made us strong. Yeah. It made us very, very capable candidates, actually. So, yeah, what I got from, from that whole entire experience with the water crisis group was that, you know what? Mm. Like, at the end of the day, business has got requirements. Yeah. And How they, you get they the requirements to... done is entirely up to you. But they will want the requirements. They're not gonna yeah. say maybe three of your guys were not, you know, contributing. Yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah. yeah, that's why I'm saying I'm very appreciative because even that itself was a very yeah. big, big lesson for me, uh, yeah. even for us. Yeah, because 
even literally that's what that's how it that, that's how it works right now in corporate they're gonna present you the problem and they need solutions whether people eight people out of ten were not put it that way it is not their problem everyone yeah. is, is gonna have to hit the wall if, yeah. if you're not, you're not delivering you know and, and most of the time like you said right you need to involve the guys from it i've noticed that yeah. with us like, hey, i need access to a particular data set and yeah. back at eight months you don't have yeah. months or weeks to deliver so you have to like yeah. literally leave your desk and go and with those guys to say hey man i need this now yep. right yes yes yes, yes. yeah yeah so, yeah, and also, yeah. yeah also that's where understanding actually comes in because sometimes you know business people they're gonna ask for something but that's not really what they want they that's what they think they want so now you can wait yeah. so long for a particular data set and it turns out not yeah. what they want so you have to they actually have to actually request for a, the, the correct one this time. that's where I, communication comes in that's why i'm saying communication is absolutely paramount yeah I, i had a similar project as well where i thought that you know this is clearly an ml solution and i did build a model yeah. and it did the predictions but the predictions were not understood as i thought they would be mm. understood the way the predictions were understood was that okay cool this is like you know like like a, a correlation study then i realized mm-hmm. like all i needed to do was to do a correlation heat map and then i'll be done with the project What that's it, that's it yeah. <laughs> so, those kind of things yeah, that, yeah. yeah. it's very important Actually, to develop yeah. that intuition as a data scientist when you're sitting mm-hmm. in the gathering of the requirements meeting to really really hone in on exactly what is this people that they want right like mm-hmm. you said there's what they think they want and then there's what they really want they really want yeah 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 so, yeah as a data scientist mm-hmm. like you know tell your job to figure out what, what that would be about so like yeah, dude yeah. We, we went to a data science academy uh mm-hmm. and then how did you hear about uh quantitative analysis from from there well about that i literally heard about quantitative analysis when i applied for the job actually because at the time mm-hmm. i was interning in telecom uh for the revenue assurance team uh in back in centurion yeah i didn't know what it, what it, I, i well when i was actually applying there because we were panicking since our telecom contracts were not coming fast enough the, with the whole treatment stuff <laughs> <laughs> so i was in panic mode i was in the currency job but now getting over, over the depressing period of my life why bring it back <laughs> that was so bad yeah that was so bad yeah yeah, yeah. and that time some people had already gotten jobs the previous year already yeah. but yo yeah so yeah it was a bit so i just saw actually i think it's in zis yeah one of my um, colleagues at the time at telcom uh who also works at Riverine Insurance is very good in data science actually because he's a very curious guy and then, as you know data science being curious is like the one of the most important traits so yeah. he does a lot of data science in his spare time actually we actually used to do machine learning competitions together uh zindi competitions and uh, as well as some of the kego stuff so he just showed me hey there's um there's an opening here because uh, like him like me we don't look i don't look at the title of the job i look at the function what they require at the uh, of 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 the candidate and i thought okay okay i'm just going to apply and i look at the title i was like oh what is it hmm, okay i'm just going to apply either way uh and then it just turned out that I've, i was actually recommended by uh, Rachel because of my skill sets you know remember Rachel from explore yeah. recommended me yeah for for the particular position and i just got called in for an interview but uh as far as quantitative i had never really heard of the term itself because i was so fixated on data science but obviously I, then i did prior uh, uh, research about uh quantitative and an, uh, analysts and uh, it turns out so that's that those that's pretty much the original data scientists because it's just yeah it glorifies that station yeah. you looked at the role of the job not the title of the yeah. job not the title not the title yeah, yeah. so normally the qualification and the years of experience and the title i don't look at that i yeah. don't because i know yeah whatever they require the job you can always learn the job that's yeah. what i i think they don't say this one want like somebody with 10 years experience in data science with the phd and the phd yeah, yeah you like oh, yeah, man PhD. And, that's another yeah. funny one phd yeah and then 10 years experience yeah and you know uh, one thing that organizations don't understand about data science or rather the role of a data scientist and as we yeah. said that's this is alluding back to what we said that communication is the most, most paramount 
you find that they actually do have someone who, who's capable of doing the data scientists work in the sense that they understand the data they have and the business problems. That person is way more ready to be a data science for that organization than people who just came in with uh, some knowledge of machine learning and stuff. Because I don't understand their data. It's actually a hard lesson that I learned. Because when I got to a, uh, where I'm currently working, I was so excited about building models and rules and uh, calibrations and stuff. Yeah. And then later I learned that, you know, the best place to be in an organization like that is to be the guy who's building dashboards. Because if you're building dashboards for different people, you, you're actually consuming so much data. If you're consuming so much data, you're understanding so much about the organization, the backbone of the organization. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure if you're going to get to this question. So for anyone who's actually looking to be a data scientist, if given a choice, all the stats in BI, uh, they normally call it BI, the guy who builds dashboards. Yeah, uh, business intelligence. Uh, well, again, it's all all just names anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah, it, whoever whoever does that is in the best position to actually learn the most about the business. Because when you leave, remember your stats knowledge and your machine learning knowledge. You came with that. If you leave with it, with just that, you haven't learned anything. Your experience is actually your knowledge of the business that you were in for those amounts of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that that's all it is really. Like, like yeah. me, uh, when, when I'm at, uh, I, I can't live with and, and uh, with maybe the skills, machine learning, stats, and things like that. Because that's what I came with anyway. I came with that, you know? Yeah. Uh, my experience where I'm working is what I've learned about the business that they're doing, uh, the sphere of expertise that they actually specialize in. Yeah. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's actually a pretty cool observation then. Um, yeah. yeah. But like, often times, as a data scientist, you you will build a dashboard or two. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, it, it it teaches you about the organization itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you know, there's there's the image they sell, and then there's the data, and then you know, you get yeah. like really really close to the real picture. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so, yeah. so like, which industry are you are you working in? I'm currently in the banking industry, in the banking sector. I'm working in the in financial financial crime uh department financial crime yeah dude your your job is is getting interesting by the minute yeah it is it is it is it is yeah that's but, crazy um, man. Mm, yeah but then again uh it's yeah. it's mostly just investigations but even those investigations they're not like what you see in sci-fi movies coding, yeah coding and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know that. But like from from the point of like anything that would be public knowledge that you're allowed to share, what is the the most popular financial crime? Well, if I, I you are allowed, to, if you are yeah, allowed, yeah, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. But but yeah. well, we do we do do AML, uh, which is anti money laundering. So fraud in itself. And, and, and AML, anti-money laundering, that there'll be different in a sense that one will be quantitative. So this one can really be described by numbers, fraud, because yeah. anything out of the ordinary uh, would be uh, regarded as fraud. Although that's not strictly true, again, it gets complicated. Uh, I, I don't think we have enough time for me to actually break that down. Yeah. And AML is how, is how the crime actually materializes. Uh, that's where you actually uh, you use your subjective knowledge, which is the most important thing, actually. Uh, qualitative is more important than quantitative because hey, this, you know, you can get this from Kegel. Quantitative, you can get it from Kegel. You can't yeah. get the qualitative part, the knowledge of financial crime from Kegel. That you're going to have to actually be working with financial crime to actually understand more about that. Dude, that, that, that's very interesting. Uh, you say it's yeah. not like the movies, but I think it's pretty cool, man. Financial crime, yeah. money laundering. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. uh, during all of your, your analysis, and I know you guys building dashboards, so what, what uh, dashboarding tool do you guys use? Uh, it's Power BI. Uh, primarily Power BI. Power BI. But, like, yeah, yeah. Power, Power BI is very popular, man. Like, yeah. It is, it is. Because people, I think organizations trust it because it, it's part of the Microsoft ecosystem. And we saw in Microsoft, like Microsoft Teams and all of that stuff. 
So it yeah. makes sense. It makes sense if they're going to get the license to actually get it from one place. Uh, yeah, for, for, for management purposes and administration purposes, it does make sense, actually. And Power BI is actually fairly powerful. I mean, it, it's buggy because it's just so comprehensive compared to other to other dashboarding tools. It's so much yeah. more comprehensive. I mean, now we can even use Python to actually query. Um, that, that's I think that's the, my preferred way of just just build views in Python, uh, and then you just re, uh, you refresh them on on Power BI because obviously the 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 interpreter on Power BI is way slower and <laughs> way slower than actually you know. Uh, just yeah. putting views. Yeah. So actually, that, that, that was going to be my next question because traditionally, I think quants they use R, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, what do you guys use? Well, our primarily our primary language right now it's 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 Python. Okay, for 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 models and stuff, it's SAS actually, but yeah. we do most of our work uh, in SQL. Uh, even even in even in, in SAS, there's something called ProxySQL, which would be an equivalent of SQL Alchemy uh, in Python that, that we used to use. Uh, then you can just code in SQL, but in Python, yeah, we use ProxySQL a lot on SAS. So our primary uh, software for building uh, variables and and models uh, is is um is SAS. But uh, well, for me and well, most of my team, we still use a whole lot of SQL. I, I think it's like most uh, eight. 90% SQL, basically. So it's so, 90% so it, SQL. It goes back to, to my point earlier. You, you are good mm -hmm. in, in SQL. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it was a blessing in disguise <laughs> that we found the <laughs> Yeah. So explore the yeah, so, for that role, man. So they gave you yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They prepared perfectly. You know? Yeah. And so, like, when you guys are not using SAS, what, what editor do you guys use? Uh, do you guys um, use PyCharms? Atom, no, no, no. Uh, well, I, I do use, I do use Python for my own because you you're not really limited by the the mm -hmm. tools you can use, but it's just as the official one. I, I can build things in Python, but I just can't deploy in Python yet. I can't put things in production on Python. Oh. Spark, okay. some as I using Spark, and I started Spark as well in a very uh, steep learning curve. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly just SQL and, uh, and there's also a, an environment called PI production insight, which is also SQL and it's good because uh, the owners of that environment actually do take some responsibility for the code that you deploy there. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and as far as, as, as tool tooling, uh, it, it's really just SQL and, and, and SAS well, and, uh, yeah. and, um, Excel, obviously. I mean, we use yeah. Excel as much as we use. Yeah, yeah, no. Excel is a staple, bro. Like, Excel is not going yeah. away anytime soon. No, nah, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah. I, I hear people say, nah, Google Sheets. Nah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> Excel is a staple of every company that I've been at. I've touched <sighs> Excel. Yeah. I, I was also doing uh, some contracting work last, last year, at the beginning mm -hmm. of the Actually, when I was still at Explore towards the end of the year, there was a contracting yeah. work that I was doing for for like Cape Town community projects there. Mm -hmm. They use Excel. Like it's it's just yeah. Excel. They give you the data in Excel and then they yeah. want the analysis. Because I did everything in Python, right? And then I sent it back to them. And then they were like, Yeah, we can't really, you know, open yeah. this. Can you do it in Excel oh. instead? So I had to redo the stuff that I've written the code for in Excel. Oh. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's actually, yeah, it's amazing how powerful Excel is, eh? Like yeah. I really underestimated, but it, it's a very capable software. Actually. So for me, I underestimated it because you know, with my advantage with Python was that I can write a code to do the analysis that they wanted, and then mm -hmm. I send them their results. Next month again, when they send me new data, I just run the yeah. code within two minutes. I send yeah. it back. Yeah, yeah. So what I discovered was that you can actually record the scripts in uh in Excel. As a macro. Yeah, yeah. You just go to developer yeah. mode and you start recording yeah. the tabs. So the next data yeah. set that comes, you just run that module. You put it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's something I also yeah, yeah, I also just discovered it like a I think a couple of weeks ago actually. Uh because we were doing I was doing some investigation and there's a guy yeah. who actually had a macro that is being using to do all these investigations. He literally yeah. just pulls the data, feeds it into the macro, and then it's just going to do everything for him. I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow. That, that was the appeal with Python, right? That yeah. I don't have, 
once I've written this code, I've went through debugging, I'm done. I'm not doing it again. Yeah. Just give me the data, I run yeah. the code. If the columns yeah. don't match, I'll just change the column names and then we go. That's it, yeah. But but that's that's the whole object of 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 actually programming. You solve something yeah. once and you never have to solve it again. Dude, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, was gonna, I was gonna ask you like, how did uh, Explore prepare you for, for your current role? Let's not talk about the SQL bit now. And yeah. overcoming obstacles, uh, okay. like, you know, professionally speaking, how, how do you feel that Explore like, you know, did the right thing by you? Well, uh, I think, you know, towards the end of the year, last year when I started interning, uh, yeah. I think uh, we had a talk with Aiden uh, at, at yeah, ECX yeah. in Centurion. Yeah, he said something very powerful, and I think I, I, for some reason, I just grabbed that and I made it mine. You know, I owned it, but I, I found it to be the most important thing, single most important thing that I actually learned from Explore. Eden said, uh, the, the, the best equipment, okay, the best form of equipment that they did for us, well, that they hope that, that they had done for us is to teach us how or where to look and who to ask. You know, and that's what I found a very, very, like very, very powerful skill, skill sets uh, for um, a data scientist, because, you know, when you get to corporate, it's not about, we talked about this, actually, we touched on this. It's not about how smart you are, how smart you are. Uh, I'd, me, if I was a recruiter or a manager, I would much rather take a useful person than a smart person. It's not hard to find smart people. It's not hard to find yeah. people. But you need a useful person. Uh, a person who knows where to look and who to ask, what questions to ask the most. Because, you know, if you, if you come across a problem that you've never seen before, where do you ask? Where, who do you ask? Where do you start? You know, those are, th those are very real problems that we have to deal with, you know? And that's where actually someone who's actually, uh, non, I don't want to say someone who's into academia, but someone who actually knows where to look or what they're looking for. Those two skills are the single things that actually Explore actually taught me. Because if you know how we used to run like headless chickens, actually asking for yeah. things from different people, we knew who to ask for what, who specializes in what. And I think that's the whole objective of data science. We have the a network of all these people who actually specialize in different things working together, you know, in tandem to actually solve problems. So yeah, that's that's how the academy prepared me actually. Because throughout the year, that's what I, I, I've been doing. I mean, I've asked Victor, I've asked Jan, I've asked Simon, I've asked you. There was a lot of things that I've asked from different people. You yeah. Know? And yeah, the, the the ability to actually gather knowledge from all around like that that is a single most important thing that we learn uh, over and above the building of models and things like that. That uh, yeah. GAVC model that they're working on, yeah, I, I thought that was very brilliant, man. That's it, it just encapsulate any professional should like you know yeah. operate yeah. day to day, right? It's so important that I actually believe it should be one one of the like a curriculum in itself, the, yeah. the ability to be willing to actually look for data because. Another thing that I discovered was that sometimes people find, okay, they are presented with a problem and then they're presented with data. They think the solution is going to come from that data, but the people who gave yeah. them that data, they don't understand a thing about the data. They just they just think you want to find numbers because they think you'll you, be a magician, basically, as a data scientist or a data analyst. Yeah. So most of the time you find the data they give you has nothing to do with what you're trying to solve. So you, you have to look for yourself and you must know exactly what you're looking for. All right, cool, man. So after I explore, I was like, you know, the, the the interview i went actually to, to a bunch of interviews and mm -hmm. some very interesting experiences so how is it like for you well i i think for me the gauntlet was set early on earlier on because when when I, on my interview it wasn't as te technical as i thought it was going to be it was more like yeah. having a conversation and that's one thing that i appreciated so much about the people who interviewed who's actual and they're actually my current bosses my, my manager because they were, they were, they actually asked they would ask you uh, real world problems that you then they because they want to hear where were you thinking from and how you reason but I remember one of the the closing questions was if there was a rhino kosher and they bank the bank or whatever bank it is that it is that you might be working for how would you catch that how would you catch it you see 
And with numbers alone, you really can't. Because for me, I said, okay, once I would have to scrape uh, the internet. I want to see when was the last uh, rhino that, that got killed. And I would actually want to scrape how much the going price for the ivory is, the rhino ivory is. And obviously, I want to I watch maybe like cross-border payments. And I wanna, I'd want to watch uh, payments into maybe uh, juveniles accounts. You know, people, they actually, they, they actually can launder. Like using their kids' uh, um, uh, accounts, how people actually open a bank account for their kids, and they just throw the money there and then just move it about. Life is <laughs> yeah, but, exposed to yeah, yeah, but weird and interesting things. Yeah, yeah, but you see, it, a problem like that, so you don't need uh, a smart, as a really uh, in a sorry, smart person, although they can be useful. But you, you kind of need like someone who's gonna be streetwise about how exactly they actually. Yeah. Uh, identify something like that within the banking structure. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So, like yeah. after that interview, they didn't have like a technical selection process after that one. Uh, technical, it was there, uh, but again, uh, I don't think it was it was something uh, that was as as telling as the actual interview itself. I yeah. think it's just uh, it's 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 just for everyone. Yeah, I think I don't I I never thought assessments actually say much, especially for people who who've been out of school for a while. Yeah, you know, yeah, because obviously, yeah, yeah, you can't. A student is always always gonna ace the assessment compared to where it is real real life yeah. experience. Yeah, but who would you want to hire at the end of the day? The student or someone who's actually been working. <laughs> a lot of people that we're working for, they have a master's, PhDs in mathematics and yeah. stuff. But they couldn't. They couldn't actually uh, pass an assessment for a first year. I mean, for um, a junior role, for example, simply because you know you, your mind is no longer tailored. Like, yeah. No, no, that, that's very interesting, man. I I went to a couple of interviews. One that stood out in particular. Um, we we had we went through the same uh, just, uh, like process as yours. First, just like you know the let's get to know you interview, like, you know, soft skills yeah. and all those things. Like, how would you, you know, how would you yeah. delegate and, you know, all those things. And then the second interview, yeah. so they gave us a data set, right? Um, there was a bunch of other students that explored that went for the same interview. So in, in this uh, data yeah. set, it's the pass rate of people who use their app to learn and the pass rate for the people who use face-to-face. Yeah. -face. So their question was, which one mm -hmm. was better? You had to do analysis and put it in PowerPoint and then send it back to them, right? And then I did all of that, mm -hmm. send it back to them. And then it was time for them to get back to me. So here's what happened. This is where I saw like, you know, the first red flag, right? After I did that, I compressed my code because they said, send us the code and with the, alongside with the analyzed data with your, with your PowerPoint presentation, right? So I, I zipped it and yeah. sent that. So the guy, then responds like, how do I open this? And I was like, wait, mm. you just extracted and then you'll get the file. So they asked you. So that was that was the first red flag, right? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. So after I told him to extract the files, it's like, okay, I, I did that, but it's not working. So I sent the files one by one, attached them and sent one by one. And then he got the files. Yeah. They never got it back to me. And and in in the interview where we were getting to know each other, that lady was asking me like, okay, cool, like you know. So what exactly did Explore teach you? But you, you know, you can uh, tell that uh, for me, they want to have a data scientist in their yeah. team. They're just not sure why yet. They're not sure why. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That was the, the thing is, I I wouldn't wanna. Yeah, I also went to a couple of interviews, and yeah. I had already told myself like, even if they called me, I wouldn't wanna go there. You know. Dude. Because those people are just so fixated, they're like they're going with the times. Exactly. They're just they are trendy. So also, most important is this when when they when HR actually hires, they, they really should work, should look at at whether a person will fit into the organizational uh culture exactly. of the yeah. team, you know, the culture of the team. That's very important, you know. Because you don't wanna because you know in big cop there's a lot of politics. You don't want people bashing heads as if they're working against each other. Uh, so I was I was doing my research on the internet, man, and I found out that quants generally work longer hours. Is has that yeah. been your experience? 
I do work long hours sometimes, and it's not uh, that's not me actually crunching numbers uh, for an extended yeah. period. I could work longer hours because maybe there's too many people working to, during the day and the server is, is overloaded. So I maybe I want to crunch my numbers later when when yeah. I have more space on the server. Uh, but mostly it's just the extra work that you put in and actually oh, try okay. to understand uh, your craft. So it's yeah. kind of like not kind of yeah. like your your first project at Explore. You you had to put in yes, yes, extra yes, hours. Yes, yes. Not yes, because you were a data yes, scientist, yes. but because the project required you to go and requires, yeah, because it requires. Yes. I imagine the more I gain experience, uh, the more I would actually, uh, uh, okay, the less hours are actually for it over time because I would know exactly what to do and when to do it, you know? Yeah. But while, while you're still finding your feet, then, which is normally the case with every new project, that's generally what, what does happen. So your working hours currently when you're working from home have been consistently more or less the same as back at the office? Uh, more, more. I think, so you, I think you work longer hours I now. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's why this this, this actually encouraged me to find, actually find a side hustle because yeah. I, now I'm I'm using my time for, for the employer at the time that I'm not getting paid for, you know. Uh, simply because I have nothing else to do, nothing yeah. else but that. <laughs> that I yeah. I understand, man. I I understand. I find myself going over, mm -hmm. you know, the 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 working hours as well. Well, uh, my boss especially. Yeah. She she she's totally against us working after hours, but sometimes we just have to, you know. But she exactly. she does it like one yeah. work extra hours at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I appreciate that from her. I th I think she's like your yeah. boss is more concerned about you getting burnt out. Because you know, yeah, you're yeah, 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 yeah. working on something, your brain would like lose all the interest in it, so that yeah. you, you can refresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. And I think actually the team that I'm currently in, a lot of guys left because of, of exactly that. Burning uh, out. A lot of guys suffered. With, yeah, they, they got burned out. Burnout is real in data science. It, it, it's it's real. real. It's real. It's real, yeah. You yeah. find yourself not being able to add five plus five. You're like, what's five plus five? You just can't focus on anything, you know? This question I, I personally want to know, man. Like, uh, I've heard more on the streets that quants they, they they make a little bit more bag than their scientists design <laughs> <laughs> well that's why uh, you don't have to elaborate uh, you can just say yes or no yeah no uh, if, if that's the case, definitely you've been a data scientist you know what they make and now you're a quant, yeah. you know what they make so yes or no uh no it's a it's a no it's a no it's a no it's, really? it's a misconception it's a misconception, yeah. But, but you find that even data scientists who work in the same roles, like in, in, yeah. in stocks markets, because those, those are people who directly make profits, even they they probably take as much as those funds. So again, it goes back to, it's just the title, what they give you. Right. But the job function is actually what determines what determines how or how much you're going to get paid or how much you do get paid, you know? Yeah, because a, a data scientist, like maybe in financial crime, won't get pay the same as data scientists, maybe investment banking, you know, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's not going to happen. If they have, I'm not saying, if they have different job functions, you know, if this other one works directly with profits, it's always going to take more than the one who actually does it, you know. Anyway, so yeah, you've been a data scientist and now you're a quant, which one do you like better? Uh, well, again, I, I really say it's the same thing. Actually. I know it's the same uh, thing. So, okay, let, let, yeah. let, me, let me rephrase the question. Which would, would do you see yourself still in the financial industry after five years? Uh, uh, I think now you're asking about the growth prospects, right? Um, uh, okay, I read from actually something that I really agreed with uh, quantitative an uh, analysis is good as a, as a job, but not necessarily right. as a career, you know, because things get repetitive. Once I master how actually the financial crime thing works. It's gonna become repetitive. I'm gonna know exactly what to do when I'm gonna so get. Like, so definitely I'm moving into yeah. like middle management. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah, moving into management, there will be something different than actually being uh, a guy down there. Unless I'm someone who's passionate about teaching guys who are coming into the team. I know when we came in, there was a guy like that who so actually uh, onboarded us perfectly. Uh, well, he left uh, shortly after, but uh, yeah, he was he was very passionate about actually teaching 
uh, new people about the workings of 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 the role you know okay cool but for so, me yeah definitely yeah i want to yeah. i want i want to actually uh, go up higher up the ladder and not necessarily for the politics but more for the knowledge i want to learn more right. uh, in the in yeah because i uh, banking is very interesting okay that's yeah. that, that's cool man that's cool mm. uh, i i also would like to get a promotion uh if my yeah. brother is going to watch this video but like you know as a as a consultant <laughs> manager <laughs> <laughs> what what is the thing that you wish you knew before you started your job? Thing that I wish I knew. Well, oh, I I wish someone would have warned would have warned me about the politics in the workplace. That would have helped actually. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think that that's the advantage of consultancy because you don't really get uh involved that much in all of, in all of that. Or rather when it escalates you most of the time you're no longer there. <laughs> I was not aware of the face politics actually. Yeah. I, I really was. I used to work as a, a technical support before and there I was so isolated from what was going on in the organization. So apart from yeah. from like um high salaries, what was the misconception that you find that people have about your job? Like when you tell people that I'm a client what is well, generally the they, yeah they think i'm i'm a very smart guy they think i'm a very smart guy but like you are dude what do you mean that's a misconception you nah. have to be a smart person to work with data the way you do nah well well uh, i we know smart guys we know smart guys so uh, i i i think I've, i'm i'm actually perfecting my crafts of actually talking and actually being able to communicate yeah. i'm not sure if that counts as it's smart but my my definition of smart in traditional sense doesn't really encapsulate just that a smart guy is a guy who knows that yeah here i have a gap in my knowledge let me get somebody who has that information to fill it yes 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 well yeah well, well people think i'm i'm a genius of sorts <laughs> or a code genius yeah. i'm not i'm really not yeah, i'm still going to go in kegu like everyone else whenever it's something yeah code related don't, for, don't forget to take over yeah. home man We, we we read that stuff stack of religious yeah yeah definitely yeah. stack of flow that's the default that's yeah. the default yeah and we live we live because of stack of flow how are we so this is yeah. going to be the last question what was the funniest request that you have gotten from your work funniest request yeah i, I don't know that's a very fun <laughs> the funniest request a a a a it's no yeah well it happens like i mean just a few days ago a guy asked me for access to some server and i was like whoa whoa uh, yeah. I, i probably need access to that server my my damn self i can't help with that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah those things happen but then again it's again it just goes back to to a misconception of 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 what uh, my department actually does in the organization last remarks that you want to send out to people who are will be inspired and want to apply for a quantitative analyst role well well one thing i can say is don't be discouraged by by uh, the qualifications that they put uh, on the job post don't be discouraged by the title or the years of experience because chances are you won't be doing that i think personally i think that's just men who feel out those who are not confident in themselves because confidence goes a long way uh, in the, in the, in the workplace So yeah. if you feel like you can do the job uh, apply obviously no, I'm not saying apply for something ridiculous like being CFO no 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 you can't <laughs> but if it's something more along the lines of, of what you do you know if you look read the jobs back it's something that you can't do yeah, you can prove that you can do that that you can do that if they are uh, they request you to prove it uh, go go for it uh, just be confident in, your, in yourself and don't overestimate your 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 math skills because really they, they really come in hand just yeah. be a people's person yeah be a people's person Yeah, and remember, uh, finding uh, ways or places where you can be useful is part of your job. You have to find where you can be useful, because your employer is not always going to know where you can be useful. Uh, it is part of your job. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good advice, man. That's good advice. Actually, it's good advice for anybody who is applying for any yeah. kind of job. Yes, yes. Are we? Yeah. So, thanks, man. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. No problem, Zeps. Thanks, thanks yeah. again, man. Thanks, man. Sure. Sure.